and we are just getting started here. So if you if you're on the stream now, let me know if you can hear me, see me, and we'll get to the good stuff just now. Let me just wrap up the setup for us over here. Today we're going to be talking about triads. We're going to talk about core tones. Those are two things that you'll use on your in your guitar playing a ton. So uh, been getting some great feedback on some of the last lessons that we've done in terms of uh, chord tones and now you can actually use chord shapes to play more creatively. So I'm looking forward to sharing that stuff with you guys today. I just need to grab the one link over here and put it inside our Wish Guitars Skills Academy and then we can fire right away. And then I'm just going to sort myself out real quick with uh, all the screens so I can see all the comments and then we will be a four away. As you can see it's a fairly cold day here in South Africa. Uh, we thought uh, summer is here but um, just as we get used to it we get a couple of surprises. Winter um, makes another appearance here. But that's all good. We'll be um, We'll be kicking off right now. All right, I'm opening up the questions and then let me just go into the Facebook comments so I can see your comments over there. And then we are a for away. All right, cool. So um, the way these uh, streams work, if you have any questions, you can uh, put them in the comments section, whether you're inside the academy watching there, whether you're watching on YouTube or whether you're watching on Facebook. I'll try and monitor all the comments sections over there. So let's just have a look there. And then, um, hey, I think I'm gonna pronounce your name right. Kang Min Kim from South Korea. Um, yeah, we're trying uh, some different time zones. Normally we did these things um, to kind of fit with Pacific Standard, which is like eight hours behind us here in South Africa. So we are going to be trying two different time zones. One time zone to be uh, to fit the Australian time, um, which obviously is not today. It's um, past midnight in Australia already. But we're going to be trying out different time zones uh, so we can, you know, help people on both sides, you know, of where we're based at here. All right, cool. So um, let me just check the sound if you can hear me. Um, it's all right. It looks like. We are good to go there. Um, we are dropping a new video on our YouTube channel today, which is all about triads. And like I said, triads is a, is, is a massively um, important uh, video to check out. Um, this lesson specifically, because we're going to break down what triads is all about for you. And then we're going to be covering that in today's uh, live stream as well. All right. And we've got Dionsi from the Netherlands. Hey, Dionsi. Uh, great to see you. And uh, we got Chewy, um, great to see you as well. So um, looks like we've got a uh, lift off here. I need to get one more screen in front of me. It kind of feels like I'm operating the uh, Millennium Falcon over here with uh, so many things going on at the same time. All right, but here we go, we're good to go. So any questions, uh, feel free to post them in the comments section. All right, so today's lesson, like I mentioned, that we're going to be launching is all about triads on the guitar. And uh, that's a really easy way to kind of get sussed out with uh, finding all of the core tones on, on the guitar. So let's, um, I'll give you like a very high level overview of this and um, we'll be making our YouTube video live, the new lesson right after this live stream. You'll be able to catch that over there. But essentially a triad, um, it's, it's a three note chord. Okay, that's just a basic arpeggio, right? So a triad makes use of those three notes, okay? Um, we get major triads, minor triads, and um, diminished triads if we stack the major scale. We won't get into the te technical side of it right now, 
but I can take a progression like C, F, in fact, let me go to, to the other guitar here, or the other angle, so you can actually see that. Okay, cool. So here we go, I can play C, I can play F, Those were all triads. So what did I mean with major, minor, and diminished? Well, listen to these. It's like C, F. But then I also have minors. A minor, D minor, and E minor. Back to C. Those are three. Uh, minor triads and then you also have what's known as a diminished triad Okay, you don't have to get into all of that right now like I said right after this live stream we'll publish a new video um, that will show you where you can get um, you know how all these triads work so why is this important well I'm gonna quickly put on a backing track for us over here and I'm gonna play a couple of things and then afterwards, I'll actually show you what I'm playing and where I'm finding those notes. Because really, that is the reason I'm talking about triads today, is the fact that uh, you guys want to know, like, how do I learn all these chord shapes, right? Or in the chord tones, rather, in, in, when it comes to, to soloing, right? So let's do this real quick. Okay, so this is a, a progression in the key of C. C, the chord. A minor, G, C, S, A minor, literally not trying to be um, doing anything fancy there but those are the literal chord tones for those chords and those triads basically allow me to to find those chord tones right without having to think you know exactly uh, what is the third of C what is the, the third of F or whatever the case may be right so those triads like I've just shown you this is C F a minor and a G. So obviously when I play over C, then I know that this note here is an E note, right? Which happens to be the third of C. Then when I go to the, the F note over there, okay, that comes from that triad shape, and then back to the E note. So, that is how you can play a cool solo. Alright, he's right here by the door. I think uh, someone will grab him now. Um, okay, cool. So, there you go. C, F, A minor, and G. But I can also play it here. C, F, A minor, and G. I can also play it here. C, F, A minor, and G. And as you can hear, it's the same progression all the time. So now I'm going to jam over that track again. And I'm going to play a few lines in this position, a few lines in that position, and a few lines in that position. It's kind of painting by numbers because I'm using those chord tones from the shapes, right? To basically show me what notes I need to be playing there. Right, so let's check it out.
All right, that last line that I just played there, it's something I wouldn't have thought about if I wasn't being intentional with the triads. So hopefully you guys heard that, you know, those shapes that I just used, they literally handed me the notes on a platter here that I can then choose to, to play and do with whatever I want to do with those notes. So let me know if that makes sense. What I'm doing there is I'm literally just using those triad shapes and then um, I am going ahead and I try and be melodic with um, what I'm doing with the actual shapes, right? So, um, the video that we're going to post is going to be a PDF uh, that you'll be able to download as well. So that when I talk about the video, we'll post it on our YouTube channel um, right after this live stream. And then it's up to you to go and learn those triad shapes, right? Because... Your ear is kind of, it's an interesting thing with your ear, like, um... Alright, your ear kind of can start to fill in the blanks when it knows where to find the note. So let me go back to this camera and just kind of explain that concept uh, to you. So when you're kind of flying blind, right, on the guitar and you don't really know where to find the notes, um, it's it's tricky to, to venture out and do something because you're kind of scared that you're going to make a mistake, okay? If you don't know the neck, right? But if you play a line, imagine you were singing, all right? Um, so a singer, when they sing, they will sing over um, the chords, right? And if they want to go higher, they'll go higher. If they want to go lower, they'll go lower. But those are chord tones that they can just, you know, sing, right? Um, so singers kind of, you know, they just do that instinctively because they can't say, okay, cool, well, let me play this fret or let me play that fret. They have to, like, use their um, ear and, and their um, voice to sing a note. Now, on the guitar... If I'm playing a line, like I just did, then I know I need to go up to F, but if I don't know where to find that note, it'll be hard. But now I know this is a C. Um, let's, let's bring this in as well. And then I'll add this shot in over here for us. Okay. So if I'm playing C, yeah, it's from this triad. To F. To A minor. So what am I saying is I'm saying is as you're playing the the idea, if you know where the shapes are, then you can go up to the higher notes and come, you know, you know where to find safe notes. Let's put it like that. So if you're a pilot, one of the things you need to be able to do is kind of flying blind in the sense of like, without looking at what's going on around you, if you're just flying by your instruments, right? You should be able to trust your instruments to know that you are not flying upside down or uh, without knowing it, or like flying towards the ground, thinking that you're going straight, because you lose your sense of direction. So you've got to be able to trust your your instruments, okay? It's the same on the guitar. If you know your fretboard, you can kind of trust your fretboard that you're going to go to the right uh, notes and you're not going to crash into a building or whatever the case may be. Um, so that's really what the triads do. They give you those um, safe notes. So, so Chewy is saying... Uh, the shapes is something you're is interested in learning. So um, good news for you. The video that we're going to post today, it's going to be, um, it's going to have 21 triad shapes. Okay. Um, and then Clyde is saying he loves the channel. Tim is saying great stuff. And Caleb is saying, hey, sir, I've been playing worship electric guitar, but I feel like so limited in what I play per song. Which of your videos can help me with that? I want to feel more confident in my guitar. All right. Well, um, if you check out the last uh, couple of videos that we posted, that's all has to do with this is using chord shapes to play more melodically. And you're welcome to email me as well. Um, let me see if I can put that on the screen. Okay. Any of you guys are welcome to shoot me an email and then um, myself or Kenan can just uh, direct you to... The different videos that cover some of these elements. So there you go, Shaw at worshipguitarskills.com. Just shoot me an email anytime and I'll be able to help you guys out with that. So 
Let's just talk about uh, tension and resolution for a second, because if all I'm going to do all the time is uh, playing Hey Ademir from Brazil, if all I'm going to do is playing safe notes, it's going to kind of be boring. And, and let me explain to you what, what just playing safe notes are the whole time. I'll do it with that same progression again. I need to play safe notes. nothing wrong with that but I'm not saying anything new I'm just spelling out the chord tones if I wanted to kind of make it a little bit interesting I, I can start adding non chord tones to give me some interesting sounds so check this out <laughs> I played the E and over C that E is the third but when I go to F that's tension listen to this it's not exactly it's a nice sound but it's not a sound you want to use all the time it's kind of like wasabi when you eat sushi right uh, wasabi um, definitely adds an awesome flavor to to sushi um, but you, the ratio needs to be right. You can't eat a, a, you know, a piece of wasabi that's the same size as a California roll, right? You just want to use it sparingly. So this is a little bit of a wasabi, right? So that's why I go. Not too long on this note. Then I go to F, which is in my triad. So what am I saying? This note is an E note, which is not in the triad for F, but it can give me some tension. Then I went back to the E note over A minor. All right. Nice. But then when I went to G, see that E again is not in the triad because the triad is E G. wasabi if we want to call it like that right all right that's pretty sweet okay so what am i doing here i've got a safe note over c then i've got a little bit of a tense note over the f which i resolve then i've got a safe note over the a minor and then a little bit of a tense note over the g that i resolve okay let's do that with the track again and then I'll tell you how you can find all of the, the, the tense notes, tension, and then how you can resolve it. Okay. Okay, here we go. Safe note. So hopefully that helps you to kind of understand what I mean with that. So where do you find these um, triads and where do you find the, um, the tension notes, the wasabi notes, you know, um, since I'm playing a green guitar here today. So the shapes, they are all over. This is C, B minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, B diminished, C. Going to learn those when you get the PDF that's coming with uh, today's video. All right, no worries with that. Um, where do you find the other notes? Well, that's just a simple scale. So, this is a C major scale. <laughs> Scales. Um, again, if you shoot me an email there at charlottebushguitarskills.com, I'll give you a, a sheet with arpeggios, chord shapes, and scale shapes. So, all the notes that are in the triads, those will be uh, safe notes, 
and then the other notes that are not in that triad because remember a triad is three notes but your scale has seven notes so now you've got three safe notes and then four unsafe notes if, if, if you want to call it that so um, over a C the C note would be safe but if I play the B it's not so safe the D can work the, e, the F is a sus4 A kind of wants to go to the, uh, to the G note. So that's where your ear starts to, to pick in if you know where to find the triad notes and then you can go and check out, okay cool, that's where I find my other notes, right? As it relates to finding the, the notes to give you some tension and then the notes to give you um, your safe notes, all right? So how do you practice this? Well, first of all, you want to learn the shapes. Again, check out the video and the, the PDF that's coming uh, in a little while. Um, and then you want to map out your progressions. Okay, so like I said, yeah, this is C, F, A minor, and G. Then you want to find the C over here, F, A minor, the chords first like kind of like um, find your uh, your safe zones right before you go and do it and then it's literally just about playing uh, stay safe at first do all the vanilla stuff just playing on chord tones and then you start adding in non chord tones so let me jam again a little bit in a different position of the neck I'm gonna start by playing just the chord tones using these triads and then I'm gonna add in some fun and games with non chord tones the wasabi notes. Here we go. just uh, having some fun um, and I'm using all these notes at my disposal to just kind of come up with uh, different melodic phrases right and um, these triads is a great way for you to kind of learn where to find uh, your chord tones all right so let's I think I just uh, pressed the wrong button yeah let me um, pause there for a second and ask you guys does that make sense 
is that kind of helpful to uh, check out your triads like this and that pretty much kind of spells out for you where you are going to find those uh, chord tones and then when you mix up the chord tones together with your triads then to basically see okay great um, that's how I can create some cool melodic sounding um, lines which in essence is combining chord tones and non chord tones all right so let me know if uh, all of that rings true for you and if, and if that makes sense and uh, if you got any follow-up questions feel free to pop those in the comment section as well all right we normally have a little bit of a delay with these things so um i'll just keep an eye on the comments here and if you have any other questions that's not relating to this uh, feel free to to ask them as well all right cool so caleb is saying um that's all working and uh, Chewy is saying, yeah, I can see this working out, especially with getting the shapes, getting the shapes with make more. Um, let me just see if I'm reading that right. Looks like a, uh, maybe just a half a comment there. Yeah, but those shapes, uh, they make a ton of sense. The problem that people make on the guitar is they try and look at all of the notes and then they want to, or the full fretboard and they want to play something. But you got to give yourself a constraint. Like if you just if you just work out those shapes, and then uh, then you just start jamming, right, within the confines of that one area of the guitar neck, before you actually go into the the full the full on um, the whole neck. Because when you look at the whole neck, um, it kind of gets what how can I say this? It kind of gets a uh, It'll be overwhelming for sure if you're just starting out because now there's just way too much there's too much to do right um have you guys ever felt like that if you're on youtube watching it on your tv or um, you're scrolling through netflix and there's just too 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 many documentaries too many cool things to watch it's kind of hard to make a choice um because you're like literally you know faced with all these options you know so it's good to remove some options and just stick to a couple of notes and then um you know give that a shot so today's video will show you the 21 shapes of this um of these triads and then uh, on tuesday next week we'll uh, release another video where i'll show you um you know more of these kind of uh, ideas you know so and on rick is saying good info and chewie is saying can you show us some of your go-to guitar riffs you like to use yeah totally um yeah, there's a bunch of stuff, you know, that I do kind of depending on the song, but um, let's see. So my boy is, uh, how old is he? He turned one in September and he just recently discovered his voice, you know, uh, that it can go really loud. Um, so uh, you might hear him in the background there. So go to riffs. Um, one thing I like to do. If I just want to create some rhythmic mo uh, movement, is I kind of like to do. Uh, let's let's put this in here. Okay, cool. I kind of like to. Do like kind of a bouncy thing like that. So what did I do there? Um, what I do there is, this is the C triad, so I can play C, for F, I can play C for A minor, I can play C and then for G, and back down to, to the B. So I like doing stuff like that, I'll give you some examples of that. And then I also like playing the same thing over all chords, and, and that's going to take us to our next question that we can answer as well so just kind of finding a cool melodic hook and then just repeating it over and over so let me jam over this again and we can see a couple of go-to riffs there <laughs> Thank you. 
right, so a couple of um, interesting lines there, you know, some stuff, but basically just using triads, you know. Um, something else that you can do, which is kind of cool, is if you use uh, octaves, right, with your triad shape. So, something like this, check this out. Same thing with the triads. Obviously, I know the C triad is C, E, and G. And then F is C, F, A. And then A can be C, E, A. And then G can be a G, a B, D, G. So you can play the triads up and down the neck like that as well. Um, we are actually going to start, we'll do more, um, you know, videos around the kind of licks that every, every uh, worship guitarist should know, things that you can play for fills and all that kind of stuff. So that's me just messing around. Hopefully, uh, Chewy, that makes some sense there. And then the unknown Teron is saying, can we uh, teach you on open triads? So it looks like one of the, the team, um, either Armand or Kenan, would have replied there to you uh, with a video that shows you exactly what to do with the open triads. So the open triads, all that is essentially, um, instead of playing a C chord like this, where all the notes are in one octave, it's, it's the same notes, but I'm dropping the C down an octave. So instead of this, Close triad. I've got. So I'm spreading the notes, the same notes, but I'm playing them across one octave. Uh, so that video there will show you what to do. Um, yeah, definitely, uh, actually, we'll, we'll do some of that stuff and kind of show you guys where we find um, the notes and how we play it and how we do all that kind of stuff. All right, so I forget or forgot uh, who asked this question, but uh, on one of the previous videos, I did something about, you know, chord tones that are changing. Um, we, so that means you can play the same chord tone, the same chord tone, but the sound of that chord tone will change. So there's uh, many different ways for me to try and explain that, but um, basically... One way that I've already done here today is when I play c the C note over a C chord, that's the root note, okay? But if I play the C note over an F chord, now it becomes the fifth. Very different sound than the octave, right? And then if I play the A minor, different sound it's that typical minor third okay now over a G that same C is a fourth that then kind of wants to resolve down to the third so what happened here is the same note C has four different sounds over these four chords so I've got a root let's do this it's a very uh, it's a unison, well not unison, but it's a, the same note. It's the, um, yeah, it's the same note, right? C played over a C chord. C played over an F chord. Okay, that sounds like very, um, kind of majestic, right? And that perfect fifth sound. You know, it's, uh, um, 
it's Star Wars, it's, uh, um, I forget all the others, but so many great themes, uh, theme songs, as that, that fifth sound. So what am I saying is, the C, instead of sounding like the root note, when played over an F chord, it gives me that strong sound. When it's played over an A chord, A minor chord, see now immediately it sounds like that minor sound, right? So now I've got three different sounds out of this one note, gave me three different sounds. That's basically what we are saying. Here it gives me like a um, just the same sound as the uh, the root note. Yeah, it's that, that majestic fifth. Yeah, it's that sad minor third. Yeah, it's a little bit of a tense fourth. Honestly, is a it's probably one of the best things that you can learn on the guitar is the relationship one note can have with many different chords. Okay, um, it's kind of like that in a family unit, right? So I am my wife's husband. I'm my son's father. Um, I'm my mother's son. I am you know, my, my grandmother's grandchild. Okay, so the same person is a brother, a father, a son, and a grandchild. It's a silly example, but I'm just saying like the relationship that I have with my wife is very different to the relationship I have with my son or the relationship I have with my daughter or with my other son or with my mother or with a friend. It's the same person. It's still shawl, but the way in which I relate and the way I connect with other people that is going to change the, the nature of the relationship, right? Um, the same is the deal, the same deal with notes, right? So this, yeah. That is the, the whole deal with um, how the, the chord tones can change, okay? So again, earlier I showed you I can play an E note over a C chord. But that same E note over an F chord becomes a major seventh, which I can take up to the root. And then that same E note over the E chord, oh sorry, the A minor chord, now it's a fifth sound again. And then a sixth over the G. Essentially, I used three notes there. So that's the, the big lesson there, is if you can learn how to see the relationship of a note with different chords and understanding, like when I'm going to talk to my son, I'm gonna, it's, my tone is going to be different than, say, when I talk to my wife, right? Um, hopefully, this kind of tracks with you guys to kind of show you that one note is going to sound different depending on the chord that you hear it over. And that is also something that's not used in worship much, but it's the whole concept of, of modes. And we won't really go down that rabbit hole now, but um, the same notes can have a different sound depending on the, um, yeah, the chord that you're playing that over. So um, I forgot who asked that question, but um, we'll go back to your comment here on YouTube and we'll link you to this a specific section in the, the live stream. And you can go and check that out. All right, guys. So we're getting to the, the end of today's stream. If you have any more questions, uh, feel free to let me know. Um, Charles, I saw that you asked a question about God of Revival. Um, so I wonder if, if Kenan has done a video on that. I'm not sure. I don't remember that um, offhand right now. So that might be a question that we can answer for you. Let's just see. What did you do? Um, he's done You Deserve It All. Alleluia. Waymaker. And he's done God of Revival. Yes. Yeah, so it's on the YouTube channel. Yeah. And uh, so what I will do is I'll ask Ken and just to go and respond in the forum. Um, and then he'll be able to answer your, your question over there. 
So um, for, for those of you guys who, um, who are curious, we also have a Worship Guitar Skills Coaching Program where you get access to monthly lessons with myself. Um, we do additional live streams. Uh, the YouTube videos that we post here goes to the uh, members portal as well with some additional resources and some, some goodies there. So if you're curious about our Worship Guitar Academy and our coaching program and some of our other content, feel free to shoot me an email there at shawl at worshipguitarskills.com and I'll be able to tell you about that. So Charles, you, you can go and check that one out and let me just have a look. Um, you also asked for some tips uh, or a lesson on basic slide guitar in worship. So um, I don't really play slide. Um, it's uh, some of my favorite guitar players like Derek Trucks, um, uh, you know, he's a slide guitarist, but um, it's something I never really got into. But Kenan uh, definitely plays slide. So I'll ask him to go and do some videos that we'll also post there in the members portal with some uh, basic tips on slide guitar. And then Lionel, um, here are some questions about ambient tone that we use in month two or three um, about the reverb and the delay. What I'm going to do is I'll do a separate video as well to answer that question because it's a fairly uh, involved topic and I'd like to give you some uh, specific settings, etc. So um, I'll definitely help you out with that. All right. Um, cool, cool. So Tyrone is asking about time signatures. Can I please explain that? And then George is asking uh, chords for worship D, A, B minor, G. So that's a one, five, six, four progression. All right, cool. So let me answer both those questions real quick. A time signature, that is the, the, um, the, time, the timing of a song, right? So the most common time signature is four, four, okay? Um, I don't think my iPad is going to connect to the computer now. Um, so I can maybe do that in a little bit more detail next time. But let me see if, if I just pull this up. Um, a time signature is essentially two notes. Okay. Um, let's have a look here if this is going to work. So it's either written like that. Or it can be written on top of each other like that. So um, I'll show you guys what I mean with this now. Okay, so let's add this here and let's see where that's showing on the screen. So yeah, that, that's that's basically a time signature, right? Um, it's two notes, either written next to each other or underneath each other on a, a piece of music, right? So the first note, or let's look at it like in the traditional sense, right? And um, when it's written above each other, okay? I wonder if it's got like a... No, let's see... Yeah, just 4-4 four, four like that, okay? So, in the traditional sense of the word, when you look at 4-4, four, four, um, that means we have four beats in a bar, and each beat, that's the top one, tells me how many beats are there on a bar, and the bottom note tells me that it's four quarter notes, right? If it was a 6-8, like, let's, let's do that real quick. If it was a 6-8, like this, then that's a 6-8 time signature, which means we've got six beats in a bar and each note is a, an eighth note, okay? Another common time signature would be a 3-4, which is known as a waltz, which basically means we have three notes in a bar and um, each note is worth a quarter note, okay? So a 4-4 four, four would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? A 3-4 would be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. A six, eight would be one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So those are the two things that you need to know basically with a time signature is how many beats um, are there in a bar. Okay. And, and what is the value or what kind of note is each beat? Of course, you look at the tempo, which tells you how fast those beats are happening. But um, in essence, that's a time signature. So, um, yeah, I can't think of any, like, I think Amazing Grace might be written in the 3-4 time signature, if I'm not mistaken. Um, like, Reckless Love is definitely not a 4-4. It's, um, 
you know, some people say it's a 9.8 and others say it's a 6.8. So that one has got some interesting timing going on there. But songs like uh, um, How He Loves Us, I think is a 6.8. Um, so it's just got a different feel to it because of the amount of beats in the bar and the tempo that you're playing at. So that's a time signature. It basically tells us the feel of a song. Like if you do a waltz, one, two, three, one, two, three, very different to a six, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So now we're getting into the differences between simple and compound time signatures. But Teron, that's essentially what a time signature is. And then George, you're going to be in luck because if you download the PDF, you'll be posting with the, the lesson later today, then you can just go ahead and find those triads because you are saying, what do you play for D, A, B minor, G? So D, A, B minor, G. And you can do like D, A, B minor, that PDF will be posting later today that's the those will be the triads and once you know those shapes you can just move them up and down the guitar neck to basically find the um how do I say find the other notes because you can move it around another another six eight song is great are you lord and um, that's another great song um we won't go into this rabbit hole today but there's something about time signatures like if you look at most of the worship classics like Great Are You Lord and um, you know a couple of the other um, great classics so to speak they are typically in a 6-8 time signature right so um, I don't know how true this is right but uh, another way to write a 4-4 time signature is to use uh, a C like this right stand for common time now, I don't know if this is true. I actually need to research this. But back in the day, um, when the church, you know, the old um, church, you know, basically the composers of the day, they were only allowed to um, compose in 3-4 because 3 was the Holy Trinity, right? And, um, you know, the composers kind of kept going back to the church and saying, you know, come on, guys, 3-4 uh, is awesome. But, you know, we want to write in these other time signatures. Um, and eventually they kind of said, yeah, sure, okay, cool, go for it. But now it's no longer uh, a holy time signature. And they took away the um, other half of it to make it a C. Now, I, full disclosure here, I don't know whether that's the actual truth. But in any case, um, there's that. And even, uh, what do you call it? Intervals. <laughs> This is known as a tritone, you know, and the, that interval was, it was kind of banned as well in the early church, you know, because it was the sound of the devil or whatever the case may be. Um, so who knows the fact that they labeled that um, one sound like that, it's, it kind of makes sense like they might have uh, done the same with the time signature. But in any case, um, different different chords, different keys, different time signatures. They kind of have different sounds, and um, you know that's a whole another discussion when we talk about frequency and and order and rhythms and all those kind of things. But uh, we'll stick to the basic stuff for now, and we'll get into those discussions. You know, maybe in uh, on another at another time. Uh, all right, Teron, you're welcome. Says thank you for the explanation. And uh, George saying thanks. I love your videos. Well, thanks for the support, George. Uh, really great to have you here. Um, and it's been great hanging out with you guys again. Um, keep an eye on the YouTube channel. We'll be posting another video later today. So, Chewy, yes, that uh, there's going to be a link uh, that will get you access to that PDF with all those triad shapes. And um, yeah, that's it. So, I might miss some comments if they are still coming in. 
since of the, the delay, but I've got to run for another uh, meeting right now. It's been great hanging out with you guys. I, uh, yeah, I pray favor, blessing and protection over all you guys. And um, yeah, really praying that you find whatever it is that you need to develop your skills so that you can become a skilled worship guitarist and also a skilled worshiper and find it that uh, you can lead others in worship so that they can have an encounter with God and really uh, transforming the atmosphere and culture and society uh, because really now more than ever people uh, need that so we, we get to have the privilege and honor to uh, be able to play a role in all of that so that's my prayer for you that you can grow as a player in go from glory to glory and strength to strength um, my email let me just see if I want to put that up if I can put that up on the screen once more um, it's shawl at worshipguitarskills.com if you have any uh, I'll just put it up here okay looks like I'm having some technical issues here okay let's see no it's not letting me do it we'll just leave it uh, if you rewind on the the stream you'll be able to see that but uh, feel free to shoot us an email and if you want to find out about what some of our other memberships that we have on offer uh, you can also mail me and ask me about that all right guys god bless and i'll see you on the next stream take it easy bye bye